In this third and final skin smoothing technique I'm about to show you, we'll be using a tool which is new to Photoshop and is in CS5 called the Mixer Brush. And the Mixer Brush is in the same submenu as your standard brush tool. And to get there, I'm currently already on the brush tool. So the quick keys to cycle through that submenu are Shift B. So I'll hit Shift B a couple of times until I get to the Mixer Brush tool, which is this one right here with a little drop sitting above it. Now I'll just create a new layer by clicking on my new layer icon. And I'm going to rename this Skin Smooth. Now the people at Adobe have gone to great lengths to create quite an amazing tool with the Mixer Brush. And there are an amazing array of painterly effects you can create with the Mixer Brush. In fact, people have created entire tutorial DVDs just to this tool. So we're not going to cover all the many facets of the Mixer Brush, just the basics in how to smooth skin using this particular tool. So I'm going to take a little shortcut and show you the settings that you need your Mixer Brush options to be at in order to create smooth skin. Now this technique is particularly good if you want to create that uber smooth skin that you quite often see in some magazines. It's not to my particular tastes, as I think that style of retouching where the skin is super smooth tends to add an element of unreality to whoever you're retouching. But the benefit with using this particular technique is that you can smooth skin relatively quickly. And you can always combat that extra smooth effect by adding a little bit of noise and texture at the end. Now these are the settings that you need your mixer brush set at for this technique. First of all, up here, make sure that you have clean brush ticked. And to the right, make sure you have unticked the load brush after each stroke. That way you're not going to be painting the foreground colour onto the canvas. Moving along to the right, make sure you have this option ticked, which is to clean the brush after every stroke. Next to the right, we have all our presets here which are just various combinations of these next four options, which are your wet, load, mix, and flow. But we don't need those presets at the moment because we're going to create our own. So we'll just ignore that for now. Now, our wetness option here dictates not the wetness of the paintbrush, but the wetness of the canvas. So if you have a high amount of wetness, the idea is that the paint is going to move around a lot more. And the lower the wetness, it's not going to move around quite as much. Now, to be honest, there isn't a big difference between anything above 0% wetness. So a wetness of 1% isn't in fact too different from a wetness of 100%. So to be honest, for this technique, a wetness of even just 1% is enough. So I'm going to make my wetness only 1%. Next, we have our load. Now, if you're painting a foreground color onto a canvas, then your load option here is going to have an impact on how you paint. If you have a very low percentage of load, it means your brush isn't carrying that much paint, and so your brush stroke isn't going to last very long before it runs out of paint. And if you have a load of 100%, then that means you can have an infinitely long brush stroke without it running out of paint. But because we're not painting with a loaded paintbrush or with any foreground color, it means that load isn't important for this technique. Next along the line is mix. Now, mix dictates how much of the canvas color and the loaded color in your paintbrush are going to mingle with each other as you're painting on the canvas. And once again, because we're not painting with a loaded brush for this technique, the mix isn't important. But what is important is your flow. Now the flow acts as a master to all those other options which we've typed in. And for this technique, I like to have a flow of about 20%. Next up, we just make sure we have ticked sample all layers. I should point out that if you want to experiment with the mixer brush at a later date, then you have over here to the left, an array of all different types of brushes which simulate real life brushes as if you were painting on an actual canvas. But for this technique, we just need this first option ticked here, which is our soft round brush. So I'll just zoom in on the face, command space by click and drag, a little bit closer. I'll increase my brush size just a little bit with the right bracket key. And the benefit of this technique is unlike the other techniques I've shown you, you don't have to option click in between each brush stroke to sample the skin underneath. All we have to do is merely brush over the skin making sure that we run with the anatomy of the body and what we're doing is we're pushing the paint around or pushing the colors around acting as if the paint has a certain amount of wetness to it and so what's happening is that the skin is very quickly blurring and becoming smoother. 
So let's look at the forehead just for a second. Before and after. And you'll see how quickly that skin is smoothing up. So I'll move on down to the cheeks. And now down to the chin. And you can see that not only are we smoothing the skin, but we can push the highlights and the shadows around a little bit. Hypothetically, if I wanted to make the highlight on the chin a little smaller, I can push some of this darker patch here into the, the center of the chin, reducing the size of that highlight. Or I can do the opposite. I can push that lighter color back out towards the edges to increase that highlight a little bit more. So it's almost like you're sculpting the colors of the canvas into the position where you want them to be. A quick before and after, before and after. One thing to remember when using this technique is to make sure you don't go over those areas of high detail. Because what you're doing is pushing the colors around, you'll end up smearing those areas. So if I was to run the brush over, say, the eye and drag it down, you'll see that what's happening there is that we're pulling the color down over the cheek there. So we want to make sure that we're just sticking to those large tracts of skin and not running over those areas of high detail. So Command Z just to go back one step. And now I'll move on to some other parts of the body. The chest, for example. So I'll increase my brush size with the right bracket key and making sure I run with the anatomy of the body. You can see I'm very quickly smoothing these areas. And there's a little bit of shadow sitting above the cleavage right here. And I can quite easily get rid of that by pushing some of this lighter color, dragging some of this lighter color on top of it. So it disappears. Before and after. And it doesn't matter if we lose some of the highlights and shadows throughout this technique because I'm going to show you a couple of techniques a little bit later on in how to accentuate the shadows and the highlights and give the body a little more of a 3D look. So now I'm going to move on and smooth out some of the other problem areas. Here we are at the tummy, where there are all these little fine hairs sitting underneath the belly button. So I've just increased my brush to about a third of the width of the area that I'm retouching, which is at the moment from the belly button down to the bikini bottom here. So with the right bracket key, I'll just bump up the size of the brush and making sure I run with the anatomy of the body. You can see I'm very quickly smoothing out these hairs and they're very quickly disappearing. A quick before and after, before and after, and those hairs are very quickly disappearing. Here we are at the legs, and there are all these little fine pores which we need to get rid of. And this is probably a pretty good time to point out the importance of, with any skin smoothing technique, you've got to make sure that you're running with the anatomy of the body and not against it. For example, you have this lovely highlight here running down the center of the thigh, and yet you have this dark patch on the very top of the thigh here. Now this adds to the impression of the three-dimensionality of the body. And you'll notice if I increase my brush size to about a third of the width of the area that I'm retouching, and if rather than going with the, with the body, like this, if I start to go against it in the other direction, you'll see that I'm, I'm in fact pushing those darker colors into those lighter areas, and I'm creating this flatness, which I don't want. So Option Z a couple of times just to get back to where I was, and I'll continue smoothing the skin while making sure that I'm running with the anatomy of the body. 
Here we are at the end and I've finished smoothing out Rebecca's skin. And if I option click on the eye icon of the skin smooth layer, we can see that everything we've done has been copied onto this new skin smooth layer. And now I'm going to zoom in, command space by click and drag over those areas so we can see a quick before and after. Before and after. Scrolling down to the chest. Before and after. Down to the tummy where all those little hairs were. Before and after. And moving down to the legs. Before and after. And all those little fine pores have been removed and quite a bit of that little subtle discoloration. But as we can see, the skin is very smooth and probably a little too smooth. And so the way to combat that is to add a little bit of noise, a little bit of texture, which I've done in the other skin smoothing tutorials. And I'll do that here as well. So the first thing we need to do is create a new layer. And to bring up our new layer options, we hit Command Shift N. And here are our new layer options. Now under Mode, I scroll down to Overlay. And that gives me the option to tick this box, which is to fill this box with a neutral grey. So I'll tick that, or a 50% grey. And I'm going to rename this Noise, and click OK. And here's my new Noise layer here. And if I option click on the eye icon, we can see that it's just a, a layer filled with grey. But because it's on Overlay, we can't see it. We'll only be able to see the textures we apply to it. So now I'm going to zoom in a, a lot closer so I can see exactly what effect I'm having. Just on the chest and the face area. And I can see that some of these areas are looking a little too smooth and a little lacking in texture. So with my noise layer selected, I come up to Filter, Noise, Add Noise. And I think in this case, I'll add a noise of about, say, 3% and click OK. Now, because our skin smooth layer is completely opaque, and not translucent like in the other skin smoothing tutorials. The noise that we add to it is perhaps going to be a little too obvious, a little too sharp. So now that I've added this little bit of noise, what I'm going to do is I'm going to blur it a little, a little bit. So once again, come up to Filter, Blur, Gaussian Blur, and we're just going to blur it by 0.5 of a pixel and click OK. Now because this noise layer is affecting the entire image, we don't want that. We only want it to affect those areas which we've been uh, messing around with and, and blurring and smoothing. So the easiest thing to do in this case is to command click on the skin smooth layer to select those areas we've smoothed. And with our noise layer selected, we'll just hit add layer mask. And if I option click on the mask, you can see it, we've just made a mask just to those areas which we've blurred and applied it to the noise area. So now the noise is only affecting those areas which we've smoothed. Command 0 to fit to window. And so there's my third and final skin smoothing technique using the mixer brush in CS5.